Hello, my name is Morgan, and I am a PhD candidate in Theater and Performance Studies at York University. I also teach first year intro to theater and performance. We are so lucky in higher education today that there is so much research going on into the science of learning, and we can incorporate that research into our teaching methods. In fact, oftentimes the science behind learning is more simple or even more counterintuitive than one would expect. So today I am going to give you two simple science-backed solutions for the beginning and end of your lecture or tutorial period. These active learning exercises will promote student learning for any class size. I first learned about the science of learning when reading books like How We Learn by Benedict Carey or Ultra Learning by Scott Young, but it wasn't until I read Small Teaching by James Lang that I fully understood how to incorporate the science of learning into my teaching. One of the simplest and most effective methods of increasing student memory in their learning for literally any program is retrieval practice. The retrieval effect or testing effect basically states that testing is not only good for assessing students' learning, but also for promoting that learning in the first place. Information gets stored, organized, and consolidated in our long-term memory better when we are forced to retrieve that information at various points in the learning process for instance, by using flashcards or quizzes. It's important to incorporate this into your lessons for a variety of reasons. Firstly, if you are going to be assessing your students through retrieval, like with a year-end test, then it's important that they get opportunities to practice that style of retrieving in advance of the test itself. That way you ensure that you're actually assessing skills that your students have. Secondly, it encourages metacognition, especially if you tell your students why you're doing retrieval practice when you do it. This will encourage your students to practice retrieving information on their own time outside of class. And thirdly, my favorite, if your learning outcomes for your course emphasize critical or creative thinking, it is vital that your students are practicing retrieving basic information that you're giving them throughout the course. Creativity happens when you connect disparate ideas together, and your students are not going to be able to do that creative thinking if they don't have those basic ideas from your field to begin with. This is so clear when we look at a learning taxonomy, for instance, like Bloom's revised taxonomy. If you want your students to be at the creative level of learning, then they need to have a wide and solid foundation at the remembering level of learning first. I think that we don't incorporate retrieval practice into our own learning or into our lessons plans for a variety of reasons. First of all, it's just hard. Like, it's a challenge to recall information, and then it's really embarrassing and annoying when you get that information wrong, especially when you could just passively look through your notes and find that information. Secondly, it's kind of boring. It's not a flashy, fun teaching technique that emphasizes creative thinking. And thirdly, it can be super awkward in a classroom setting when you ask your students a question that they know that you know the answer to, and then you're just waiting there for them to respond, especially if they don't respond. What do you do in that instance? It's awkward. <laughs> All of that said, the negative emotions that come alongside retrieval practice are actually part of what make this such an effective learning tool. Learning is challenging. If it's not hard work, then it might not be learning at all. And there are ways to make this type of practice more enjoyable and less boring for you and your students. So let's talk about the two activities that you can bring into your classroom to encourage this type of learning. The first exercise I have for you is something that I will oftentimes put at the beginning of my tutorial or lecture. This is the pop quiz. So one thing you can do during class time is literally test your students. This can be done asynchronously through whatever learning platform you're using or synchronously online or in person. Online you can use Zoom polls, that's what I do, or in person you can use the questions on an overhead projector that the students write down their answers to. If you're using this as a teaching and learning tool, it's important that it's not graded or perhaps that it only comes out of the student's participation grade. Ultimately, retrieval practice works whether or not 
not, students got the answer right or wrong. That said, it only works if they immediately get feedback on whether their answer was right or wrong. So you want to make sure that you're leaving enough time to take up the answers to those questions, either in this class that you're doing the test or the following one. I like to take up the answers to these quizzes directly after the quiz itself so that I can let the students that do know the answers give the rest of the class the answers. Doing this at the beginning of class has the added bonus of reminding students what they already know so that it's in their head when they learn this new information. That way it's going to be quicker and easier for them to connect the new information they're learning to the previous sets of information. This is something you can incorporate into your very next lesson. So if you want to pause the video now and jot down some ideas of questions you can ask your students in the next class about prior course material, then please feel free to pause the video. I'll give you a moment right now to do so. Okay, are we back? Ready for the second exercise? This second exercise is something I like to put at the end of my lecture or tutorial. And this is a more discussion-based interaction between teacher and student. In this exercise, I ask students to put their hands up and tell me a topic that we addressed in today's lecture. So this is them retrieving information that they only just learned. It's important in all of these retrieval exercises to have the students close their textbooks. I know how tempting it can be to just take a look at the notes you've just made, but it's important that you're actually retrieving the information because that is what's building the pathways for your long-term memory. If you're making a list of topics in an in-person class, then you can make that list on the chalkboard in front of everyone so they can see. If you're doing it for a Zoom synchronous lesson, then you might pull up a Google Doc and do a screen share and type out that list of words. This has the added bonus of being able to share that list with the students at the end of class as a kind of collaborative note-taking exercise as well. If you want to take this list of topics even further, you can do what James Lang calls a one-minute thesis. In this exercise, you ask a student to pick one one topic randomly from the list. You then ask a second student to pick another topic and a third student to pick a third. And then you ask the students to silently write a thesis in one minute that incorporates all three of those terms. So not only does this force them to remember what those terms mean, but it also asks them to connect across them and ultimately argue something, which is bringing them to that creative and critical thinking level. You could also adapt that exercise for whatever works for your course. For instance, if you are putting on plays, you could ask them in one minute to come up with a play concept that incorporates those three theories. And of course, the thesis exercise can either be done in class time and then have students share some of their ideas, or you could ask them to post it to a discussion board after class. Now, as this video comes to a close, I encourage you to flip your notebook to the next page and write down everything you remember about retrieval practice from this video. It is scientifically proven to improve how much you remember for the next time you plan a lesson.